mind blowing. I would not do that again. Very, very expensive. It's definitely information I'll be keeping in my back pocket. Managed to fall off the chair, obviously. at the local Sainsbury's it's literally like 15 minutes from centre parks most of that is driving out of the centre parks complex so I'm going to nip in Sainsbury's get some of the stuff we need take it back to the lodge um, yeah and then hopefully that will be us done for the week is it to be in a new place i'm pretty sure i've just gone up a lift just to go back down the travel later i'm clearly getting this all wrong hi guys welcome to the vlog and it is a center parks vlog i'm gonna tell you about my experience how it's gone how much we spent, what there is to do on a budget, etc, etc, etc. It is our first time at Centre Parks and I am like so excited to be here. Um, the kids did really well in the car yesterday. It is the longest journey I think we've done with the baby in the car that I can remember. It's like two hours door to door. I didn't realise we were so close to the Lake District and that is definitely information I'll be keeping in my back pocket for future reference. Yeah, the kids did well in the car. We tried to time it so that the baby napped at the same time as we were driving because he will nap in the car but unfortunately the rustling of a carrot bag of all things woke him up so he didn't have much of a good nap. Anyways, the journey was fine. Uh, there was a little bit of a delay getting into the site so basically when you get to the site you can check in at four o'clock and we got here at like half past three. Just coincidentally it's just how the day worked out um and then you, we had to wait to get into the car park so that was like a bit of a queue so i ended up getting the kids out of the car and walking down a little bit and then jumping back in the car once my husband had got a bit further down through the barriers so we booked a three bedroom new style lodge i think I, I can't really remember to be honest it's definitely a three bedroom all of the bedrooms are either double or twin bedrooms so two are set up as twins and one set up as a double that's like the perfect size for us i feel like if we were in a two bedroom whilst that might be enough bedrooms for like the kids being only small. Space wise, everything obviously is quite close to each other. So fortunately there is one bedroom that is slightly further away from like the kitchen, which is just here in the middle of the room. Um, and obviously with kids, if you've got light sleepers, it's a little bit better to have one slightly further away from where the adults are gonna be once they're asleep. It was 459 pounds for this lodge. We've booked Monday to Friday, uh, which was a pretty good price. We've had to take my daughter out of school so she's not actually compulsory school age. She's not actually five yet. So the school have authorised the absence because she's not actually five. Um, so we've had to bring her out because the price of centre parks in half term is just mind blowing. Like half term and summer holidays, it's crazy. So we definitely wanted to try it out before we ever thought about committing to paying that sort of price because we've never been before. So we didn't know if it would be for us. I have heard a lot of people talking about how expensive it is to do activities when you're here and all that kind of thing. So I was quite conscious of that already. I did pre-book a few activities. I can't remember exactly how much I spent. I will put it on the screen here, um, but I'm pretty sure it was somewhere around my, like 69 pound mark. I've booked one class for my daughter, one class for my son, and then like a joint activity for them both. So my daughter did the mini ballerina session this morning. I think it was 13 pound. I was expecting it to be like 45 minutes to an hour. I'm sure it probably told me how long it was on the actual like website, but it was like 35 minutes, which I felt like was a bit short. I don't really think we needed to book that activity, but people had told me obviously to book things up because they get booked up fast, which I'm sure they do, um, but that you can cancel 
free of charge. So I booked a couple of things at the time of booking and I just didn't cancel them, frankly. Um, I don't think that we needed that activity, to be honest. I don't think the day would have suffered for it. So we could have probably saved ourselves £13 on that. So we've been exploring. Our lodge is in the Moorland View area. Now, when you first get here and you don't know where you're going, everything seems really far away. And if you get lost walking around, you can be walking for a while. However, once you figure out the footpaths, you can walk everywhere fine. We thought I was going to need to hire a bike because my husband's got a bike with a seat on for the baby and my daughter's got a bike. However, I don't think we're going to bother. Um, I think my husband and my daughter can go on the bike. The baby can go on the back if he wants to. And then we can always swap over. I don't think I'm going to bother spending the money on hiring a bike. I just need to get a bike, honestly. I've been threatening to get a bike for ages. Mine got stolen when I was like 10 and I've never had a bike again since. So I don't think we're going to spend the money on hiring a bike. I kind of thought there'd be sort of more places to ride the bike, but you kind of just ride the bike on the footpath and bike path around the site. So it's not like there's a place where you can go off riding the bike. It's just like around the site. So the travel day was quite expensive and that is partly down to poor planning. Um, so it's extremely difficult to do anything with my kids because they want your attention. The baby's only a baby. My daughter wants obviously to interact with you. It's quite difficult to get anything done, especially with the baby. Um, so packing has been hard. I've left my husband to do the packing and I've basically taken the kids out of the situation a couple of times. It feels like we've packed a lot, but somehow we don't have everything we need. So a few people have given me a few tips, like bring a good pan if you want one. So we did bring a good pan because we plan to cook our gusto. I was surprised to find there isn't like an oven tray here. Like there's no oven tray, you know, like to put fries or anything on in the oven. There isn't one. Um, so we've brought a pan, we've brought like some dishwasher tablets, spare bin bags, spare toilet rolls, things that people told me to bring because otherwise you end up having to buy them and that's quite pricey. So in order for my husband to be able to finish packing up the car, I took the kids to McDonald's because they needed lunch. It was the closest place I could get them a hot meal from. We went to McDonald's and they had food there. Then we set off and on the way we made one stop. We stopped at motorway services. Um, we got a Costa. I used a free drink for mine and we also bought some sweets from the shop, which was £5.50 for two bags. I would not do that again. I would plan ahead and bring sweets for in the car for my daughter, um, but I didn't. So there's that. I don't think we spent any money on the site. I did have to go to Sainsbury's though. So quite a few people have told me to book a click and collect at the local Sainsbury's or Morrison's. And if I ever came back, I would 1000% do that. It was so hard packing up. Like we've packed up what we had in the house, but we are due a shop soon. We're due a food shop soon. Um, so we didn't have like enough stuff to really have everything. I think if I'd have booked a click and collect, it would have been much easier. Um, but instead I went to Sainsbury's and spent a lot of money. Now it wasn't because Sainsbury's was particularly expensive, but there were a few things in there that I couldn't get. So I couldn't get own brand salsa for some reason. They didn't have any. So I ended up having to get Doritos salsa, which was £2.50 for a jar. That is just insane. There was something else. I bought a bag of mini eggs because I love mini eggs. And obviously this is the only time of year that you get them. The big bag of mini eggs is £3.75. That is absolutely insane. So I spent quite a lot of money at Sainsbury's. There was also things like my husband had forgotten to bring the baby's cutlery and he's well into, he wants to use his own fork, he wants to use his own knife. And obviously the adult ones here are like way too long. So I had to buy some of those. That was like over five pounds and I had to buy some spur dummies. So it was an expensive arrival day. However, that was not actually anything to do with things that we needed to do here. That was sort of travel and bad preparation on our part. So if we take that out of the mix, at that point, we've just spent the £459 for the lodge and the pre-booked activities. So day one, we had our first full day. As I said, I booked the mini ballerinas thing, which we went along to, that was at 10 a.m. Uh, then we had a little look around like the sports activity area, the sports plaza, I think it's called. There's absolutely loads to do in there, but like everything costs money. So uh, we had a little look around there. There was a park outside that, so the kids had to play on that. And we came back to the lodge for lunch. 
Then I took my daughter to a different park. So there's, there's two main uh, like kids play areas here. Took my daughter to a different park whilst my uh, baby was napping. And then after his nap, we all went swimming. Um, and then we came back to the lodge for like dinner. They watched a little bit of telly because there's like free view here. Um, and then obviously the kids went to bed. My husband and I had some pizza. The only thing we paid for yesterday was some pizza and a dessert at the park market on site because I only bought one pizza when I went to Sainsbury's, which was an oversight because we were so hungry from all the different activities that we'd done that we had our main like tea earlier on and then we were still hungry. So we had some sort of extra pizza as a bit of an evening snack, basically. The swimming is free. The lockers are free. I kind of thought there was going to be like a some sort of system going in, but literally you just walk straight in there. It's a little bit chaotic. It's very, very busy. Obviously, there are loads of people here. Loads of people want to use a pool. It's free. It's great. There's kids' pools. There's babies' pools. There's flumes for the adults. There's like a lazy river, but it's not really a lazy river because it's like rapids. It goes around actually a little bit fast, but I took my daughter in that part because she had armbands. You have to have armbands for that bit. I don't know why it's not really what I imagined. I actually genuinely came into this like trip with almost no expectations. I kind of imagined the subtropical paradise, aka the swimming pool, being a bit more open, but actually it felt like there was a, like each section was like closed. So it was like kids pool with a slide, baby pool in the middle, wave pool this side, then you go like up all of these like steps to get to like the adult rides and like there's an outdoor pool as well actually, yeah. It's great, it's massive, but my baby was quite overstimulated and overwhelmed by the whole thing. Now he doesn't mind going swimming when we go swimming at like the local swimming pool, but obviously there's a lot less going on in there. Um, so I think he just got really overstimulated and concerned and stressed and upset by the whole like changing room chaos that he kind of just clung on to us when we went into the swimming pool so that was a bit disappointing because obviously i kind of thought he would enjoy that part um you know we did manage to get him in the water he just didn't love it you know so i think on day two i'm going to take my daughter swimming whilst he's napping so it's just me and her and she can sort of get the full experience without anyone worrying about the other person with the baby that's just clinging onto them and is unhappy about it we don't want to make him stressed about it we might try again on day three with the swimming to see if we can sort of have a less chaotic experience with that. So the first full day, we didn't actually spend anything on site apart from the um, food that we bought from Park Market, which again, we didn't need to buy if we'd have just planned a little bit better. Hello, hello, it is day two. The plan for today is I booked the Pancake House. It is the only meal out that I've actually booked. So we're going there this morning. I will let you know how that goes. Then I plan to take my daughter swimming in my son's nap time, maybe a bike ride, maybe the play areas. And then there's a free mini disco between 6 and 8 p.m. Um, and that's somewhere near the swimming pool. So we're going to figure out where that is and we're going to go there. I'm just about to head up and catch everyone up. They've gone on ahead. But when I asked for recommendations for centre parks, literally my inbox was flooded with book the pancake house, book the pancake house, book the pancake house. So it's the only meal that we plan to eat out. It's the only one that we've booked out. So I'm going to head to the pancake house now. Somehow we've managed to book an 8.30am reservation, but it doesn't open until 9. So we're going to go there for 9 and see if we can get sat down. Uh, but yeah, I will let you know how that goes because people were raving about it. Um, so I'll let you know how it is. You'll also notice that despite the fact that it is the height of March now, it's still a soggy one. Um, spring has definitely not arrived in England yet. So the daffodils are out, but they obviously didn't get the memo that we're having a soggy start to spring. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. Hi gang, we are back from the pancake house. It was actually pretty good. So there were obviously two children, two adults. Now, initially we didn't kind of realise that my daughter was drawing on the kids' menu, so we almost ordered her an adult portion, thank goodness we didn't because that would have been huge um it was 3.95 for the kids portion so we ordered my son like fruit and honey pancake and my daughter a rocky road one 
because she's nearly five. She knows what's good. Um, and that sort of was one pancake with either fruit and honey for my son or for her, it had like a scoop of ice cream and some whipped cream with it. So she enjoyed that. Um, we got a milkshake and milk and then me and my husband both got adult pancakes. So my husband got fruit and honey, but the adult version and I got vegan bacon and maple syrup. Um, it was really nice. It was like the this is, is it called this is or this isn't bacon, the vegan one. Anyways, I really like it and it was good. There was an automatic service charge of 7.5%. Now I actually usually tip 10%, but I'm glad there was a service charge on it because I always feel like it's a an awkward one when you don't have cash and then you're like, can you put a tip on? And if they say they don't accept tips on card, it, it just becomes messy. Anyway, so I'm glad there was a service charge on. I would usually tip more. So I'm not sure if there's an option to do that because it literally just automatically was put on. It was £32.14 for the group of four of us, which is pricey for a breakfast, but I feel like it's not that bad, actually. Now, me and my husband love going for breakfast. It's one of our favourite things to do. It was very kid-friendly, obviously, which is great when you're dining with children, so you never feel, like, awkward about, like, your kids doing whatever on earth it is that they're doing, because there's other people's kids in there crying or wailing or being upside down on the chair, as my door frequently is. Um, managed to fall off the chair, obviously. So, you know, it was good. It was fine. Would I recommend it? Sure. Um, would I bother going to any of the other restaurants? I don't think so, to be honest. We went to guest services. We found out where the mini disco is tonight. Now, I believe that's free. I also believe it's very popular. So I'll be interested to see how that goes. Um, we nipped to the park because it was right by where we were having breakfast. Um, my husband's just taking the kids out on the bike. My opinion so far of Centre Parks is quite mixed. The lodge is lovely. The site is gorgeous. It's so nice. It literally... I'll, I'll put a clip on, but as I'm talking to you right now, behind me, there is like two big patio windows and I'm just looking right out into the forest, which is gorgeous. However, what I find a little bit weird is that usually if you're going on holiday, you would choose either to go on like a forest, like secluded nature type holiday, or you would choose to go to like, you know, another brand of like activity holiday you know like a butlins type thing or when i was younger we used to go to haven um used to absolutely love it with all the like entertainment going on this is kind of neither one nor the other so the accommodation and the setting is gorgeous it's very much nature get away from it all there's no cars allowed on site after the first day so you're allowed to bring your car on at four then you have to take it off by 10 p.m and then there's no cars allowed on site so there's no cars around the kids can walk in the the street other than like the maintenance vehicles that are bobbing about you know the kids can walk in the street they can ride around you're sort of not worried about any of that obviously there's no noise of cars which is the best um so it just feels very like peaceful there's birds there's red squirrels it's gorgeous but then you've got all the sort of commercial side of it so almost everything here costs money and it costs quite a lot of money so there's like climbing which my husband went to find out how much that was £30. Now, bear in mind that our local climbing centre is less than £10 for the children to climb at. Um, it's quite expensive. I'm sure it's great fun. You know, it does look fun, but it's very expensive. Um, you know, and I've seen some of the prices for some of the other activities and they seem very, very expensive. There's restaurants here. Um, I'm not sure if the bowling is open. There is bowling here, but I'm not sure if it's open. It looked like it was perhaps under refurbishment. The majority of things do cost money and they cost quite a lot of money. Now, Fortunately, our children are at that age where they're not asking to do everything, absolutely everything. Um, but there's definitely a few things that my daughter wants to do that will cost us a bit of extra money, which is fine because we can afford to do that. But it does feel like there is a lot of money to be spent here. I was speaking to someone else who I work with um, and they said that they managed to spend £1,600 on a holiday to Centre Parks, um, having spent £900 on their accommodation and then another like £700 on site because, yeah, it is pricey. There are free activities. You absolutely don't need to spend money when you're in here. As I've said, we didn't spend anything yesterday except for like a pizza, which we could have brought with us. Um, and then today so far, we've done the pancake house. We did decide to buy a coffee because mama needed coffee. I even got an extra shot. Um, but that's sort of a usual thing we would do day to day anyway. So free activities to do here. You can go swimming. There are two kids like playgrounds. One of them is quite big. It's really good. Um, somebody said that you could do mini golf if you brought your own like golf putter and ball. I'm not sure because we haven't tried that. Um, someone said that that was free. I saw that on the internet. There's the mini disco in the evening. So that's great because that's free. Um, we just headed into like where the leisure bowling is or where the bowling area is to find where the mini disco will be because it's actually in there. And there was like 
little sort of soft play blocks out that my son could go on, which I think is free. I believe there might be other venues with soft plays inside them. Um, so there is free things to do here. Obviously, you can go biking, you can go riding, you can go walking around the forest. But the majority of the activities that are here are paid for. I feel a little bit like for a forest holiday, you would usually want to get away from it all. And this feels like a strange mix of commercial plus forest holiday. Some might say it's solving a problem and merging the two together. I'm not sure they need to be together. That's just my thoughts. Our total spend was £723.90. We enjoyed our stay at Centre Parks, but we wouldn't rush back. What do you think? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I will catch you on the next one. <laughs>